artists right now that are making more money selling merchandise at house concerts than they are when they go out and open for a bigger artist. Because normally the bigger artists are the ones getting all the money and if you've got a $5 item, you can usually get it. So the key is to basically make sure that you've got product to be able to sell. So Wade, you wanna come up here real quick? It's my buddy Wade. Wade uh, has a merchandise company and we started chatting. Thank you, sir. Grab yourself a microphone there. And I wanted to find an opportunity for you guys. There's a couple of different things. A lot of you guys know that I consult Live Nation on the merchandise deal. And the folks that I'm dealing with, Demand Perry, Bradley Gilbert, Florida Georgia Line, you know, they have Foo Fighters and the Eagles and all this stuff. A merchandise company, not a lot of times are we able to grab on to the, to the younger artists. But that doesn't mean that you have to go spend 10 and $12 on a t-shirt to turn around and try to sell it for 20 bucks. So luckily, Wade and I go to church together and we were talking after one thing and I go, oh, what do you do? He goes, oh, I'm in the merch business. I'm like, dude, I'm in the music business. And I said, I got people all the time that are needing quality products and quality shirts and things like that. And uh, he put together this cool little deal to offer to you guys. So I'm gonna have him chat here for a second and then I wanna be able to answer your guys' questions about the business. And I think he brought some examples and things like that. But tell us a little bit about your company. Well, first of all, uh, thanks, Rick, for, for uh, allowing me to come out. Secondly, uh, what a cool thing. I come in and get to see Elena here. I didn't know you were here. Great to see Kevin and Val G. Dope. They're stalkers. They're, right? I mean, yeah, it's, so. it's, it's crazy. I, I, half the people here, I know you, so I, that, that's awesome. Uh, we are, a little bit about me, uh, really quickly. Uh, we came to Nashville in 08, uh, my wife and I, and, and actually all three of our children. And uh, we bought a bar. Uh, we ran it, a uh, songwriting bar here at Picks up on the, on the road. We ran it for two years. Uh, yeah. And uh, anyway, through that, we ended up making a lot of friends uh, in the industry, a lot, of, a lot of people. And when we decided that uh, that bar business was really not for us, uh, I went to work with uh, a company uh, that's based here in Nashville uh, that works exclusively in the merchandise industry. Uh, their primary client uh, is TNA Ransom or Hulk Hogan, Jeff Hardy, Steve, those guys. Uh, it's kind of crazy. I had no idea that the amount of uh, T-shirts that professional wrestlers sell. But it's, it's really, really bizarre. Uh, anyway, I worked with, with uh, Dama Vada for a couple of years, uh, learning the business, and then we started our own business. Uh, and we still team with Danny. Uh, on major projects, we still we do a lot of things uh, based on your exclusive needs. Or uh, basically, what we're trying to do is tie in the volume from impact and bring that price points down for uh, guys that need 100 t-shirts, 144 t-shirts. So uh, when I found out what Rick did, we put together a package exclusively for you guys uh, that will put you in a uh, depending on your quantity, four to five dollar t-shirt, uh, and you can take a look out that handouts that will hand out uh, for anyone that, that's looking for them. Uh, we also do, we have a full line uh, merchandise company. We do koozies, uh, hats, shot glasses, keychains, you name it. We just had an artist that uh, did a uh, Lucas Hogue, I don't know if anyone knows Lucas, but uh, Lucas just did a, a European tour. And one of the things that he did, uh, we, we did a hot stamp coin for him uh, that is actually, I brought a sample, it's really cool. Cost him like a couple of bucks or something, and he just gave it away to, to his fans. And the, the funny thing is, and I think this is what happens, I've got it in my pocket right now. You got so a lot in your pocket. I can hear a whole bunch of stuff. There it is. I've got it in my pocket right now that we did for uh, Lucas and Wildlife Willie. And I think that's what people do is they, it's a cool thing, a challenge coin or whatever, and they put it in their pocket and carry it with them for nothing. So, uh, but anyway, that's really quick about us. I'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to take any time. But, um, no, and the thing that's important is that one of the things that you need to have that low ticket item, especially if you're an opener, just so you can that make sure that it has your website on it. Okay, don't try to put your Facebook, don't try to put your Twitter, don't, just make sure that you've got something that can get your website on it, whether it be a sticker, whether it be a coin, whether it be a bottle opener, whether it be whatever, to get them to a location where you can now capture their information. Also, too, is start bundling. 
You know, don't try to think of it like, oh my gosh, I've got to make so much the first time off this person because the, the facts are a fan is worth $118. It's very seldom that you're going to get that $118 the first time that you meet them, so don't try. So make sure that they're leaving with something, whether it be a $5 koozie or a $10 t-shirt. You know, in the beginning, you may just want to sell a whole bunch of your t-shirts where you're only making a couple bucks, but now you've got a bunch of billboards walking around with your band name or your name on that item. So I appreciate you making that affordable. We're going to be done here. You know, they we get kicked out here a little bit before 8 o'clock, but I'll make sure that we leave time where you guys can see his stuff, get a flyer, meet his wife, get to know him. He's a wonderful person. Uh, as you guys have learned, I'm only bringing you people that I do business with myself or would do business with myself. So make sure that you, uh, you grab him and uh, take a look at what he's got to offer and then follow up with him on that. So, Thanks, guys. Thank no, you. thank and you. Rick, and uh, I will finish with this, that what Rick just said about the billboard is I, I just got a, uh, an email a couple of days ago, and I thought this was fascinating. 144 caps. Uh, they've done the, the statistical research study. Uh, touching 72,000 people. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of nuts, you know, because most of us can't really afford to build one. So, anyway, <laughs> God bless you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Wes. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get real for, for a couple minutes. I need to acknowledge a couple people that I met this week. I was, it was invited. It's, it's funny. As most of you know who know me, I sign up for every blog. I always tell people, I don't read it unless it makes me a better person or makes me money, because then I just don't have time for it, except I did read the Hunger Games series, and I'll just throw that out now, so that doesn't happen. So, the other day, I got a chance to meet a guy that I follow on a blog by the name of John Acuff, and I was at uh, Dave Ramsey's office, and that's where John works, and he's one of the speakers, and, and I'm not, there's no secret about my spirituality and my beliefs and things like that, so I, I had followed John uh, so he had this goofy website, whatchristiansbelieve.net or something like that, where he just kind of made fun of Christians. And he says what everyone else is afraid to say, but is thinking. So he, he tells me about this thing called the Five Club. And I'm like, oh, cool, what's the Five Club? He goes, yeah, we all get together from 5 to 7. I'm like, p.m.? He goes, no, a.m. 5 a.m.? I go, how many people show up at this thing? I said, I get usually between, you know, on a good night, 70 people here at Two Old Hippies. He goes, oh, we get about 60, 70 people. Is it 5 a.m.? He goes, yeah. So I'm, you guys know me when I say, my, I'm up till 11, 12. So I go, I get up, set my alarm, get up 4.15, go into this event. And there's like 60 people in this room, all just motivating and encouraging. And these are the people that will make it in this world because they're willing to say, you know what? People don't get, they jump started. But what interests me about this thing was, is that about six of them were in the music business and they were artists or writers. Artists don't do 5 a.m. They usually go to sleep at 5 a.m. So John recognizes these two gals and I'm sitting in the same row in them and, and he talks about it. And what he did is he, he asked us some questions like, hey, what are you working on that's so exciting? And they kind of mentioned what they were working on that was so exciting, and I gave them my card and invited them to this event. But Poema, raise your hand. That's the duo Poema. Uh, can also make things at 6 p.m. too, not just at 5 a.m. But uh, I just wanted to acknowledge them because they want so much for themselves that they're willing to go out of the norm. The normal person does not get up at 5 a.m. They don't go to places at 5 a.m. where they can get inspired. It's available. To them, but not everybody does it. Not everybody comes here to get free advice, but you guys do. So hats off to you. But John has a brand new book called Start. This is phenomenal. And that's what a lot of you don't do. You don't start. You come here month after month, and I go and look at your sites because I have your email addresses, and a lot of you aren't any further along on your progress on your social media or anything from the first time that you've come here. And I want to challenge you to get out of your comfort zone. I really do. I want you to just make a small goal and go get it. Whether it be to have 50 new Twitter followers by the next time this happens. And then put your plan together to go get those 50 Twitter followers. Stop coming here and getting all this information and taking all these notes and watching all the videos. Do something. 
with yourselves. Okay, Wade and I are in a, in a program together and we have what's called accountability partners. Find yourself an accountability partner. Somebody that will call bullshit. Somebody that will sit there and say, look, you told me that you were going to do this and you're not doing the work. You're not getting it done. Start being there for each other. If you could do that. I'm going to send out something I started writing today. And I was, I spent probably, and my wife will vouch for this, probably anywhere from 20 to 30 hours a week listening to internet marketers, to people that are going to help me build my business. And I take everything that I can from those internet marketers and try to apply the music side of it for you guys. And the things that I'm working on right now and the things that, that I have to be accountable for, you know, so I had to call a buddy of mine and say, look, my mouth's been moving, but the actions haven't been taken. I need that person to step up on me. So what I'm going to create is I'm going to create an accountability club. And this club is going to consist of 10 people and 10 people only. That'll be one club. And then there'll be another accountability club that has 10 people. And these will all be artists and writers and things like that. There will be a morning accountability club because a lot of you work. And there'll be an evening accountability club. And in that club, we are going to go over our performance. We're going to go over every time. All 10 will get together. All 10 will perform. And we're going to critique. And we're going to help each other get better. We're going to look at our engagement online. We're going to look at our websites. We're going to work on all those things that are stopping you from whatever it is, from achieving whatever it is that you want to achieve. And there's, there's no more BS on it. We're going to be able to call BS. So that group or groups, they're not for everyone. I'm going to be very strict on who I let into the group. It's also going to cost you to get into that group. Because if you don't pay for it, you'll cancel. You won't show up. You'll find excuses or reasons not to get there. It's not going to be super expensive. I pay $50 every week to go into Weight Watchers to let a lady tell me whether my weight's gone up or down. Why? Because I don't want to let her down. And my wife can't be my accountability partner, which she tries to be. That's my personality. My personality needs to go in and say, okay, I lost a pound this week. Okay, I lost two pounds this week. You know what? And I'll just say it. It was Wade that reminded me about how great Weight Watchers was. He heard me share that I was struggling. And he said, dude, this is what I do. And I knew about it. I'd gone there before. But what I needed was somebody to hold me accountable and to bring that up. So I'll send out that information. If it's something that you feel you would like to get involved with, we're going to start it and see what happens. But I just wanted to acknowledge you too, because getting up at 5 o'clock in the freaking morning, but I had so much energy that day. It was awesome. And I didn't need to take a nap. Usually I do at my age, so that was awesome. So if you haven't picked up this book, go check it out. Go to his website, John, J-O-N, A-C-U-F-F, A -C -U -F -F dot com. If you give him your email, he'll send you the first chapter for free. He is also going to be having a start uh, convention with a bunch of great speakers coming in, just re-motivating you sometimes. A lot of you know the Music Industry Blueprint started when I went to the Get Motivated seminar about real estate. And I just needed something to pump me up and to kind of get me thinking differently. And I heard all these speakers talking about all these different things. And I ended up getting hyped by this... Christian guy that sold real estate and I bought his little $95 course and went to the Gaylord Opryland Hotel and I heard what they said and they were talking about asset protection and there was a guy that made three times more money than I did paid less in taxes and I'm like how the heck does that happen you know so he said a whole bunch of things that I wanted to hear and he said showed, showed me a way to do things and what he did then is he offered me a course the course was $25,000 and I took it my wife about left me she freaked the F out when I said, honey, but look, I'll make all that back just in what we'll save on taxes. And here's what happened when I went to that event. I was wanting to learn about asset protection because I had a tour bus. I, had all, I was a walking liability and my business wasn't set up properly. And my family could have been in jeopardy because I didn't know. Not because I don't care about my family. Not because I wouldn't do anything for my family. I just didn't know. So I went to people smarter than me that gave me that information. Well, I told me that information. They didn't give me that information. But when I went to this event, they brought in all these instructors. And it wasn't like the guy that makes 50 grand a year to teach how to be a millionaire. And you're like, all right, smart. 
but if you're so smart, why aren't you a millionaire? Why are you only making 50 grand? What they did is they went out and hired just monsters in their field. The best commercial real estate guy was out of Detroit. And he came in and showed me his contracts and showed me his W-2 and showed me what he looks for in property. And they did this with all these different experts. So it was a fantastic week. I was being taught by people who were actually in the business. That's what we try to do for you here is bring you people that are actually in the business. So then when I got home, they started sending me emails going, hey, we're going to do a webinar. If you could be there, great. It's at this time. If you can't, we'll record it. And it'll be there for you. And that's when my light bulb went off. And I'm like, wait a minute. I've got access to all these professionals in the business that most people don't have access to. I can go pay them to interview them to then pass that information along to you guys. That's how the music industry blueprint started. I sent out a tweet. Hey, if anybody's got questions about the industry... I'll be doing a free webinar because they told me, give, give it away. Like I teach you guys to give your music away. I gave my information away. 20 people showed up. Did it the next week. 80 people showed up. The third week I did it, over 200 wanted to come, but I was getting the any meeting for free to 200, so I wasn't going to pay for the extra. So I cut it off at 200 people, and that's when I said, there are so many people that have questions about this business that don't know where to go. Why don't I start a place where they can go. Because in town, there's no place for you to start. You come here and it's the first guy that gets you. goes, well, here's what we'll do. We'll use all the same people they use and we'll record a record and we'll take us off the radio and we'll do a video. And a couple hundred thousand dollars later, you're sitting there going, wow, what just happened? I felt that there was an easier, softer way to that. I thought that there was something better. When you start a business, you go into a town. They'll say, this is how you start your business. Here's your bank. Here's your electrical person. There isn't any of that for the music business. There's just a whole bunch of things that are out there. So that's why Doke and I got together. I met Will and I met Doke, and they had the website, musicstartshere.org. And it had a bunch of great interviews and a bunch of great information. And I said, you know, I could maybe get some fresher information because a lot of things had changed. A lot of people didn't understand the Internet or how to do that artist of fan engagement. So what you guys have done has continued to inspire me to want to build my business bigger, where now I'm going and doing two-day workshops in other cities. I'm getting ready to go to Australia on behalf of Sony Australia. They want me to go teach the music business in Australia. I've never been to Australia, so that's going to be kind of cool. But it all kind of started here. But, but what I don't want to see is a year from now, I don't want to see any of your faces at Two Old Hippies. I don't. Because that just tells me that Either what I'm teaching isn't working or you're not doing the work. I want to be invited because I follow you on Facebook to come see you at your show. I want to be invited to your number one party. I want to be invited to the things that you're doing, not that you just keep coming to see us. I want to start coming to see you. I want to start being a ruder and a rah-rah person for you. I want to be able to tell people selfishly, they came to the blueprint. <laughs> Serious, it'll make me more money. You guys are my kids' college. Let's just be honest. We don't bullshit here. That's what we are here is we're straight up. The more successes that I have, the more people that I'm going to be able to touch and help. And I heard something today from a guy named Brendan Richard, who's one of the guys I'm studying from right now. Did you live? Did you love? And did you matter? That's all that matters when you're done. Did you live? Did you love and did you matter? It's kind of how my mantra right now. You know, I, I get up every day trying to figure out ways to help you guys because it helps me. I learned a secret. There's a guy by the name of Jay Abraham. If you go to abraham.com, he gave, I signed up for his email list. That's what I did. He sent me, I learned more from this guy in a four hour drive to Chattanooga than I've learned in four years about people. And what he said to me was, as he said, and I like he was talking to me, he was on a tape, but he was talking to me because I was the only one in the car. He says, if you go find out how your success will benefit someone else, you'll have all the success in the world. And I just thought about that for a second. It's like when you write songs that matter to someone, when you write a song that all of a sudden, and I'm just throwing this out as an example, that the American Cancer Society can use to bring awareness to their campaign. 
or anything like that. So I'm sitting there going, okay, wait a minute. If I teach more people this business, BMI benefits, ASCAP benefits, CSAC benefits, Guitar Center benefits, the recording studios benefit, the web developers benefit. So what I've done now is walked into these places and says, okay, what can I do to help your business? All these people that you meet that I share with you with, ask any one of them. I have not asked or taken one dollar from any of them. I've not asked them for a kickback for referring the business. Why? Because they've done a great enough job to offer it at such an affordable price. I would much rather you guys get the same, and I'm not saying anything like that to pat myself on the back. I'm just saying that all these people that I keep pointing out, Jeff Bell Studio, Kevin Nix's Web's Design, MusicStartsHere.org, Wade's Program, the photographers, all of them have sat there and says, okay, wait a minute. If I believe like this and I get more people running through my business, they're gonna run around town and tell everybody what's going on in my business. The same thing about your music. Stop holding on to it like it's so gosh darn precious. Get it out there. Let it work for you. Let it be that for you. You know, so I just know that we've, like I said, we keep seeing each other every week. And, and, and I'm excited that you keep coming because it, it happens. But like I said, next year, I don't want to see you. I want us to be at a party celebrating something for you guys. You know, so that's what's most important right now. And... What I have learned is that the more you give, the more will come. And I didn't believe that. I honestly didn't. And what my little website, through the consulting, through the webinars, through the teachings, through everything, what it has generated for me, it's stupid what it's generated for me. But what it did is it showed me that I started believing people when they said just give, 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 give and the rest will take care of itself and I challenge you to do the same thing because it's that's not normal business just give it all away and it'll make a bunch of money well if you're giving away the right stuff so does anybody have anything that's been sitting on their mind or just been struggling with that we can answer for you today or help you with remember everything here there are no stupid questions because somebody else is thinking that they're just scared to ask it Anybody having a struggle online right now? Anybody having a problem with anything music related? Life related, I'm not really qualified to help you with that, even though I would. Is everybody good? Has everybody been getting their questions answered from us? Because that's all Will and Doak and I care about is that you guys get something every time you leave here that you're able to leave with a little bit. Everybody good? Yes, Doak. Rick, you've seen a lot of people at this stage over your career. What was the most important thing they did to propel them to the next career? I think a lot of it was what Michael said, was just being real. You know, you don't have to win over everyone. You really don't. He said it took one person to change his life. The same thing with a fan. You know, I think a lot of times artists are spraying out there. They're shooting shotgun shells that are just going in a whole different direction. I can tell you right now from the four songs that I heard from Tawny River who they are. They're people I would want to hang out with. They're people that I would want to go see because that energy. And it wasn't, they weren't screaming. They didn't have a full band behind them. They had smiles. They were passionate about what they were doing. They, they looked, they did, well, we only got 25 people. You would have thought, like Michael said, they were playing for 20,000 people. I know now what I will get if I go to one of their shows. Now, my hopes is that I get that when I go to their website and when I go to their other sites because I saw a brand that I really liked up here on stage that I think a lot of people would love. No matter what genre of music you're into, that was fun. Yes, sir. Every single person who played has now been exposed to the world because of her. <clears throat> well, it, it did, but not everybody did it. I always, some of you, who's, who here has never heard me speak? Okay. My philosophy in life is weird wins because 98% of the people won't do weird, so that eliminates 98% of the competition. Okay. Taylor and I, my words to her, 
specifically, when she went around and met with every other management company, I wasn't a manager. I never managed anybody. I was a radio guy who taught her and was passionate about her and said, if you are willing to do what no other artist is willing to do, you will get the results that no one else is getting. At that time, when she came out, 2005, 2006, we could not break a female in country music, much less a teenager. All those radio stations that'll tell you, I was there with her from the very beginning. Bullshit. They weren't. It took her 47 weeks to get her song through the charts. It took us 13 weeks to go gold. Because she didn't rely on radio. She had already built the relationship with the fans. The fans didn't have to wait to hear her music on the radio because she was playing it for them every chance she got. She played in a freaking yogurt shop in Fresno for six people because a cash register girl recognized her from MySpace. <laughs> the year later, we were there opening up for Tim McGraw, and there were two girls in the front row with shirts on that said, we're the yogurt, sh yogurt shop girls. She stayed in contact with them for a whole entire year after that. You don't have to have your song on the radio to make a fan. You don't. There's not enough room. Listen to WSIX. I love that radio station, but I can tell you the same 20 songs that are going to play tomorrow morning when I drive in, tomorrow afternoon when I go home. But as you just heard, there's a lot of great music that's all over this town right now. There are people that want to hear what you have to say. There are people that want to buy what you have to sell, as long as you come across that you're not trying to sell it. Everyone wants to buy, no one wants to be sold to. You need to make this business of yours their idea. You need to sit there. That's why I encourage, uh, for those of you that don't know, when we do the seven free songs, we give away the acoustic songs. That way we can then go back to these folks and say, hey, by the way, I've given you 10 songs. I get to go in and record five. Which five do you think I should record? And they're going to tell you. Whether it's the same five you were going to record or not, they feel like they had a part in picking this record. Hey, guys, the record's coming out on Tuesday that you helped make. It's only $5.99. And for those of you that pre-order right now, I'll send you a free koozie. You know, there's all kinds of different things that you can do to prepare them. But what happens in the major market world is we do all these impressions and then we pray. Dear Lord, please let him show up on Tuesday. My song is in the store. Dear Lord, please let him remember to go to iTunes. People are busy. They don't remember. So what we teach is to have an active email list so that you can set them up and do the countdown. Hey, every day for seven days before the album's out, we're going to give you an acoustic video of one of the songs on the record that you helped make that I need you to go pick up on Tuesday because the record label wants you to get it on Tuesday. If you knew it was up to me, I'd give it to you. But I can't. So will you do this? I'm about to do this whole presentation for the industry, and I'll share a little bit of it with you guys. We are in the business of $11. This whole town is designed around $11. The first dollar is the first download. You have to make enough friends that will spend $1 with you. And if you don't, you don't even get the record. The label will drop you if you do not have enough impressions. So your goal is to go out and make as many friends. If a friend comes up to you and asks for a buck, most of us would give a friend a buck. If a friend comes up and asks for $10, most of us would give a friend $10. You need to go make as many friends as you possibly can so when you need them to spend $11 because you're like Michael and you just got your record deal, they sit back and go, holy crap, this guy's got a lot of friends. Because a lot of friends to the record company means a lot of money. And that's all they're about. That's all they're about. That's the only way that they make money. So you need to go out and say, keep putting your marketing money and your expertise into me because I have a lot of friends. And those friends are active. And those friends I have the ability to communicate with 24 hours a day, 7 days a week because I have not abused the privilege of that friendship. So that's why I tell you, don't constantly just send out emails talking about yourself. We don't care. Include me every now and then. We have friends in our lives that when they call, you look at it and go, oh, crap, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> Fans do the same thing. We look at emails. Oh, man, I'm going to answer that. They always got something good for me. You know, That's the friend you want to be to your fans, that friends that they can't wait. You want to have an open percentage like I do in the 70% on emails. 
Why? Because I just kind of toss stuff out. I have to get better at it. Here's what I'm doing for myself. This is what came from my five club, is that I need to go and do better at the people that have given me their email addresses that have never spent a dime with me as much as I do for the people that have. Does that make sense? I keep kind of tossing little gems there, but I don't spend any time with them. Well, they've given me permission to market to them. So I need to get better at that. I need to get better at making sure and holding accountable the people that are spending money with me. Because they've invested in me to call bullshit. They've invested in me to say, look, I love the fact that you've given me money and that you believe in what I do, but you're not doing what I'm teaching you. I had to let go of two clients this week. Why? Because it wasn't fair that I'm sitting here going, you need to do this, this, and this, and then people will start going, put me under the microscope going, well, let's see how Rick's clients are doing online. He preaches this whole stuff. Let's see if his people are following his instructions. So no matter how much I love you or love your music or anything, if you're not growing your business, you're going to end up causing damage to my reputation and the business that I'm trying to build. So that's why I get very selective on the people that we let in. Because I would rather you not spend money with me than to walk around town and say, well, that, that stuff doesn't work. It's like me blaming the diet for being bad. <laughs> it's the same concept. Diet works if you work it. Weights work if you work it. I've been sober over 21 years because I've worked it. You know, it's just, it is what it is. So that's what I love about this place is it allows us the opportunity to be real with each other. It allows us the opportunity to help each other. It allows us, we're all on this journey together. So if there's anything that Dope, myself, Will, we, we keep tossing it out there. But if there's anything we can do, shoot us an email. All of you have my email. If you don't, come get it before you leave. If you're not on the Two Old Hippies list, get on the Two Old Hippies list. JohnAcup.com, first chapter, will get you started. That's all about this book. It's called Start. And that's what I want you to do is I want it to start for you guys too. So... If no one has any questions, let's just say thank you again to the folks here at Two Old Hippies. We appreciate you. If you have not performed or would like to perform here next in August, see me tonight so I can get you on the list. We take four people. They all do four songs. Uh, I would like to give those here that didn't get a chance to perform an opportunity that would like to come see me, and I'll get you on the list. Make sure that the folks that did perform, Dean, Taylor, Maddie had to go, Nash, I don't know your wife's name. Dawn. Dawn. Thank you. Okay. Tawny River. I know that because every time I send an email, I get that instant reply back. Thank you for contacting Tawny River. We'll be with you shortly. Yes. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys for playing. Make sure you, you meet up with each other, network amongst yourselves. Uh, Jared, raise your hand. Great. We've got uh, the studio. Jeff, yes, come on up here. By the way, don't leave, guys, to have to reserve two days for Maya. <laughs> She's coming from New Jersey. Okay, before you speak, he has a deeper voice than I do, so don't freak out. He uses both testicles when he talks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Rick Barker. No, that's how it is in the back. Is this amazing information? Uh, here's what I want to invite you to. We did a special thing over at CMA at our studio, which is downtown on 2nd Avenue, where we opened the public. And we gave them a half hour for 35 bucks to come in and sing to a karaoke track or whatever. We had the time of our lives. We had a also had a stalker, which I apologize for. We got some stalkers. Yeah, that's not my first. But uh, I want to invite all you guys down there. This Thursday and Friday, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have the place open for 35 bucks. You get a half hour. If you can perform your thing in a half hour, you'll have a demo, a quality demo. So if you want to come down and join us, we're at 172 2nd Avenue North. Yeah, Avenue. right past uh, Dick Slash Resort if you're walking up 2nd Street from Broadway. Just look for the sign out front that says, Bitch Strap. He, makes, he makes, makes great leather goods. You should definitely, these straps that he makes and some of the leather products are unbelievable. About halfway between Dick's and Hooters is Bitch Straps. So there you go. the spot. <laughs> also, too, one of the things, you know, the reason that we encourage you, and I think this is a great thing that they're doing with the, with the karaoke versions of these songs and with YouTube videos, the reason that we encourage you to do cover songs is just not because we don't think your songs are great. No one's Google searching for your songs. They're Google searching for Bruno Mars and Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. This 
place online that's called karaoke-version.com, which they have access to. All the contestants that perform on the television shows, those are the tracks that they'll let you use because they're like Pro Tool files, and you can take out a lot of the instruments and really customize it to make it your own vibe and your own feel. Also, too, is it gives you a great opportunity if you haven't spent a lot of time in the studio to go learn how to sing into a microphone with an engineer for 35 bucks. Then the huge scale that right. goes on. Learning experience. We have a good Yeah, time. I mean, it's, it's great education. I always tell you guys, invest in your education. When Maddie and I went there, she's my perfectionist. So I wanted to find out exactly how many songs we could get. Because they do this other thing. Was it like two hours? Two hours for ninety-five bucks or a hundred bucks or something like that with engineer. She was able to get three quality songs out of that, and even some of it, Jared went and put some percussion on it and some other really things. It's a great place to go in, and it's comfortable. You know, I mean, there's a lot of studios that, I mean, he's the oldest guy in there. You know, so uh, and he's not that old. So I go into some of these studios and these guys have been there a long time. It's just a great place. It's a great feel. It's a great vibe. And, and like I said, it's just, it's very welcoming. So put aside, you know, a couple hundred bucks, you could go in and have yourself an EP recorded. Cause if you're out playing, fans don't care if it's acoustic or full produced. They just want to know that the songs that you heard that they have a chance to buy. So if you've got new material and you've already got like a fully produced CD, but you've written a bunch of new songs, go in to the studio, inexpensive, and get those on CD so that you can start offering them to fans. That's a great place to get a good quality demo. They also, too, have writer's rooms that are for rent there. So you could go write a song, walk across the hall, get a very well-done demo all in one day. And because of the internet, you can also then send it out to your fans, this is why I say this is the best time to be in the music business. You can wake up in the morning, you can write a song, record a song, film a video on it, send it out to your folks, and get the gosh darn thing to iTunes if you want to. All in a day. Without the record man going, sorry, you're not priority right now. Sorry, it's not your turn. Sorry, forget sorry. You know, go build the fan base and then they'll come to you and say, hey, can we get on board <laughs> You got something moving along here. So I appreciate that and appreciate what you're Absolutely. doing. And I want to stop now because I want to give Wade a chance to show you some designs. If for whatever reason we have to move out, I'll pull my truck out. We'll lay them out on my truck right here in the back. So thank you, guys. Uh, do One we more time for work, everybody. Thank you. Do, do we know if you guys listen to my podcast, which I started doing again because I got Jonesing for not being on the radio. Jeff's the voice that introduces me on the podcast now. It's pretty funny. Do, do we know when the August... Uh, August 5th, right now, Pino. That's the first Monday. Uh, a Monday or two. We keep jumping back and forth from Mondays and Tuesdays. What works better for everyone, Mondays or Tuesdays? Monday. Mondays? Okay. All right. So we'll send it out to everybody. If you're not on the list, please come get this. If you do not have my email address and want it, please come get that. And thanks to Doke and Will and everyone, and we'll see you soon. Wait, you can just come on.